Judges chapter 3, verse 15 says, But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer, Ehud the son of Gerar, a Benjamite, a, a man left-handed. And by him the children of Israel sent a present to Eglon, the king of Moab. But Ehud made him a dagger, which had two edges of a cubit length, and he did gird it under his raiment upon his right thigh. And he brought the present to Eglon, king of Moab. And Eglon was a very fat man. And when he had made an end to offer the present, he sent away the people that bore the present. But he himself turned again from the quarries and that were by Gilgal and said, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king who said, Keep silence. And all that stood by him went out from him. And Ehud came unto him, and he was sitting in the summer parlor, uh, which, he had for himself, which he had for himself alone. And Ehud said, I have a message from God unto thee. And he arose out of his seat, and Ehud put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into, the, into his belly. And the half went in after the blade, and the fat enclosed the blade, so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly, and the dirt came out. Then Ehud went forth uh, through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them. Now I'm going to repeat uh, the main text for the sermon today. It's verse 20. It says there, as he took out the dagger, he says, uh, And Ehud came to him, and while he was sitting in the summer parlor, which he had for himself, and Elon, Ehud said, I have a message from God unto thee. Let's pray before we get started. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd be with me as I stand before your congregation this morning. I pray that you'd help me to stand in the power of the Spirit of God. I pray that you'd lead me in everything that I should say. And I pray that you'd take this message preached and apply it to the hearts of each and every person here. And Lord, I believe there is a message for every person here. I pray that we would hear that message. And I pray that we would let you apply it to our lives. And I pray we would live by it. So Lord, I pray that you'd speak to everyone here. It's in Christ's precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Now you'll notice a pattern in the book of Judges. Israel will do well for a while. And then they'll start turning away from God. And then God would allow an adversary to come in. And that adversary would oppress Israel. But then they would seek God's face in that oppression. And God would send a deliverer, deliverer which he would call the judge. Uh, that's what's happened here. Uh, there was Moab was oppressing the people of God. And it was because of Israel's transgression that they were being oppressed. But they were being oppressed. The king of Moab was a guy named Eglon. And Eglon was a very fat man according to the scriptures. Matter of fact, he was so heavy that when he was stabbed in the belly, the fat enclosed the blade and, the, and, he, and, and uh, Ehud couldn't pull it back out. But anyways, they're there. Uh, Ehud has come to pay tribute on behalf of Israel to their oppressors, kind of a payoff. And while he's there, he says, I've got a secret errand for you. And Eglon probably thought he was going to get something. So he said to send everybody away. Nobody's there except for Eglon and Ehud there in the summer parlor. Little did he know that Ehud had strapped a, a blade uh, to his thigh, 18-inch blade. And he says to Eglon, I've got a message from God for thee. And he draws that blade, that 18-inch blade out with his left hand, and he shoves it into Eglon's belly. He had a message for him. Now I'm going to say this, God has a message for every single person in this congregation, much as he had a message uh, for Eglon. Uh, could it be uh, that there's someone here today God is sending a personal message to? Does that startle you of the idea that God in heaven wants to talk to somebody in this congregation? I mean, the very thought of the invisible God sending a message to a mortal man on earth may seem strange to you. But it seems even more strange to me that God wouldn't have a message for every single person in this congregation. After all, uh, we uh, send messages to one another. I, I remember, uh, well, 
I, I guess I might show my age, but I remember when you had a girlfriend, you'd send a, a letters to them. You'd send messages. Maybe you was in class and you'd pass a note. Y'all remember doing that? I guess that's history now because people text each other stuff now, but, but back then that's the way we'd do it. We'd send love letters. If I were to be away from my wife for an extended period of time, I would send her some letters. We do that. We communicate. And God up in heaven loves his people, so he wants to speak to them, and he sends us messages all the time. It's just that we don't listen to them, or uh, we just kind of put, put him off. He is our creator, after all, isn't he? Isn't he the creator of all mankind? Do you think the one who made us would just uh, leave us to our own devices? I mean, does a ship builder build a ship and then push that ship off from the dock without a compass or without a guide or a shipmaster? No, he takes care that those things are provided. And likewise, God is interested in your life. Amen. He has a message for you every single day if you'll just open up your ears and listen. Christ will, will not launch you into this troubled sea without a guide without a message from him on high. It's possible that during your short life, and it's very possible, matter of fact, it's likely, matter of fact, it is true that he is speaking to you. Amen. This short life that you live is the beginning of eternity, which is a very long time. Would he leave you without communication? I mean, during this short life, your eternal destination is going to be set forever. I remember a few, about a month ago or so, I preached a sermon and I was talking about concrete. I said, during this short period of our life, our life is, our eternity is like concrete. Concrete, as you first pour it, is very malleable. You can move it around. But after a time, it sets and you can't move it anymore. And that's the way it is with the souls of men, folks. He deals with you now. He speaks to your heart now about salvation. But one of these days it's going to be too late. Once you die, the concrete is set. So you think during this short period of time that you're alive that God doesn't have a message for you? That would be a very foolish thing to think, isn't it? Would he just leave mankind alone to try to figure out this thing, uh, this plan of salvation or the will of God in your, in your life? Would he try to just leave you to figure it out on your own? I think that sounds very foolish. Amen. Christian, he is your father, and a father is always concerned for his children. He will speak to you, and he is now if you'll only open your ears and listen. That's why it says sometimes in the scriptures, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Because people don't want to hear sometimes. People are apt not to listen or to cover their ears. The truth of the matter is we've been deaf uh, to the God's messages every single day. He has often desired to correspond with us. He sent message after message and oftentimes we reject them over and over again. You ever had somebody you didn't want to talk to? And then you, you hear your phone ringing and you look at it and it says so-and-so's calling and you're like, I don't want to talk to that person. You ever had that happen? Be honest. I bet you everybody in here has done that. I don't want to talk to them right now. I'll call them back later. Well, that's what people are doing with God all the time. He has a message for you. He wants to talk with you, but you're too busy going about your own business to care what God says. It's time you listen. It's time you opened up your ear. God has a message for every single person in here. It cannot be that God has left this world. It, mean, it is the true, though, that we have left God. Amen. And we've turned a deaf ear to his messages he sends to us every single day. It's not possible that God has ceased to talk to mankind. But mankind has ceased to listen to him, to acknowledge him, and to reply to him. This morning, I'm talking especially to those who haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ as, as their Savior. I believe if you're lost and you're here this morning, He's already sent you message after message and you've received it. Amen. I mean, you've not received it. You've turned a deaf ear to it. But even now, He's sending you a message. He's telling you you need to be saved this very day if you're here lost. 
He's telling you he's got a message for you. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Now, let me give you some of these messages that he gives to man. Now, what are these messages? Well, I believe the main message that God has for man is recorded right here in this book. The Bible is the most printed book of all time. You could probably find the Bible in just about every home in America. You could probably find the Bible in most hospital rooms. You could find the Bible in the motel room. And even in the poorest of homes, there's likely to be a Bible somewhere in, the, in one of the rooms. If your Bible could speak to you, or rather, that you, if you would listen to what it says, it, you would hear it say, I have a message from God for thee. Amen. But oh, how often is ignored. Oh, how many Christians bring a Bible to church. And they turn to the passage when the preacher says, turn to this passage. But then they go home and they toss it on the shelf and don't look for it again until next Sunday morning. This is a message from God to you. Remember I was talking about love letters? This right here is a love letter from God to you, but you neglect to read it. How would you feel if your sweetheart didn't open up the envelope and read the letter you sent to her? God is speaking to you through this book right here. Just open it, look down its pages, and it wouldn't be too long until God starts speaking to you. You'd find that he would, he would have communion with your heart if you'd open up his book. You'd find uh, that you'd have medicine for all your spiritual wounds if you just open up this book and let God speak to your heart. If you just listen to the Word of God preached from the pulpit instead of thinking about other things, you'd find that God's got a message for you too. You come to church expecting God to talk to other people, but you don't come expecting Him to talk to you. God wants to communicate with every single person here. It's not that God is, is, is just uh, uh, in a little box where He can only talk to this one person in a sermon. No, He can talk to all of us. It's not that he has to spend all his time on the one sinner in the pew. No, he can speak to a multitude of sinners. He can speak to the multitude of sinners as well as the Christians in the same room if you'll just open up your ears, folks. Amen. Just open the Bible. Let the Word of God speak to you. Just listen as the man of God reads from the sacred text and explains it in your ears. You'll find God's got a message for you. You'd find that God will communicate to your heart. I mean, after all, do you have a care on your heart? Huh? I'd say everybody in here does. I mean, I heard a preacher say one time, it always stuck with me, behind every door is a broken heart. Amen. Do you have a load of care? Well, God's got a message from you in this book. He says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. There's a message in this book for you if your heart's broke. Has death come and taken someone dear from you? Well, God has a message for you in this book. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. There's a message for you. You don't have to sorrow like somebody who has no hope. For after all, if you have been born of God, you have the blessed hope. Amen. You have Christ in the heart. As a disease sees your body, or someone you love's body, there's a message from God in this book for you. When the Apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh, he prayed three times for the Lord to remove that thorn in the flesh, whatever it was. But God said to him, my grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. So no matter uh, what kind of burden you have, his grace is sufficient. That's God's message for you. Amen. But you need to open up your ears. Right. You know, there's more than just those things I've mentioned to you. This, right, this book right here is full of encouraging words. But you're never encouraged because you don't open it up. You don't hear what God uh, wants to give you because you don't open his word and let him speak to your heart. Amen. You continue to carry a burden that you don't have to carry because you don't listen to the message from God. This book here is the very voice of God. Why should it be neglected? If someone you love 
Or you looked up to, gave you a, a phone call, would you refuse it? No, you certainly would not. Amen. But how much more should you take heed when God speaks from heaven? I mean, we spend all our time with all sorts of things, don't we? We might spend all of our time reading novels. That's a book that men makes. But I would rather read the book that makes men. The Word of God, there's a message in here for us. We spend all of our time with frivolous magazines, but the Word of God will reach to our hearts and change our lives. It is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's this book. We spend all of our time sitting in front of the idiot box, the television. But we don't take heed to a message from God. Amen. Spend our time in the, uh, playing golf. I was going to say golf fields. That shows you how much I play golf. The golf course. Out on the lake. But we got a message from God we need to listen to. It's time we quieted the din of the world, the noise of the world, and it's time we focused upon what thus saith the Lord is, folks. Amen. It's time we got back to the book. We're living in an age of the most biblically illiterate bunch that's ever lived upon the planet. People don't even know the basic principles of what God's Word says. Amen. It's time we get back to the book. It's time we stop listening to all these folks Tell us what the Word of God says and see what the Word of God says for itself. Amen. And when you hear a preacher preach, I said you ought to listen for a message from God. But as you're listening, you ought to make sure it's in this book. Because this is God talking to us. Some messages that God has for us comes in golden leaf. I believe uh, that's a real thing. Are you right? And it puts out golden letters. Is that right? But anyways, whether it is or not, uh, God speaks to us sometimes through blessings. I mean, uh, he may have given you a prosperous business where you can make a living for yourself, where you've been able to help other people as well as live in comfort. Uh, you've seen uh, your children grow up in the Lord. Uh, you've had a healthy body or times of joy or you've seen answered prayers. This message from God ought to make you rejoice and it ought to make you say to yourself, how can I grieve the one who's been so good to me? Huh? Does not all those blessings tell you that he cares for you? Do you return that and reciprocate it and do your best to do well for him? He died for you. You'll read that in these pages. The just died for the unjust. That's a message from God to you. How much that he loved you and how much he cared for you. He took your place upon Calvary. He bore your sins in his own body. You ought to take that message from God and say, I'm going to live for him. Amen. He died for me. How can I not be faithful to the one who's been so good to me? I tell you what, I've had messages from God in near-death experiences. Anybody in here had a near-death experience? Say amen. I've had quite a few of them. Most of them are just stupidity on my part. Amen. amen. Yet he spared you. That's a message from God for you. He's got something for you to do. It's time you find out what it was. He didn't allow you to die in your stupidity or in that near miss that you had. He allowed you to live on for a reason, for a purpose. He's saying, I've got something for you to do. Amen. Time for you to find it. Maybe he spared a loved one so that you may witness to that loved one and see them led to Christ. He's got a message for me. Now, there's other messages that are not in gold leaf. They're in black print. Have you endured a crisis in your family? Have you seemed to have ill turn after ill turn? That could be a message from God to you. Sometimes he speaks through blessings and sometimes he speaks through curses. It's a fearful thing to turn a deaf ear to you when he, I mean to God when he speaks to us in solemn tones. Sometimes he strikes, with, strikes us as he speaks. If you've had a child and that child has put himself in a bad situation, a lot of times you'll give him a spanking. Amen? And a lot of times you get a speech during that spanking. Now, I never got spankings. I got whoopings. I don't know how many times I heard the leather come out of the belt loops. 
And while the leather is striking my hinder parts, I'm getting a lecture at the same time. In harsh tones. Y'all ever had that happen to you? We needed more of that. We've seen a generation that didn't get that. And see what's happened. But anyways, God does chastise. Now if God's our Father, He's going to be better than an earthly father was to you. And a good earthly father will correct their children in the wrong. Amen. To get them in the right direction. Our heavenly father wants you to walk in the right direction. And he will chastise you. He will spank you. He will whip you. As I was telling someone the other day, he doesn't do it because he hates us. He does it because he loves us. That's why it is called correction. We are going in the wrong direction. That wrong direction is going to lead us toward wreck and ruin, and he's turning us in the right direction. Amen. And we are so stubborn and hard-hearted, sometimes we'll just keep going the wrong direction, so he has to get a hold of us. Amen. Have you disregarded him? Has he had to bring out his chastening rod upon you? Sometimes he speaks in that way, folks. The Bible is very clear in Hebrews chapter 12. It says, Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son he receiveth. Who is he that the Father chasteneth not? He's a bastard and not a son. Amen. That means if you continue on in sin and God doesn't uh, jerk a knot in your hind end, that you're not really his. He'll get your attention if you're his. Say amen, y'all looking at me like a calf looking at a new gate this morning. He'll chastise you. He will correct you. He will get you in the right way. Is that the message God has for you? You're going in the wrong way? I mean, we will have trouble and tribulation, and it's not always because of something we did. I mean, Job uh, lived rightly, and I tell you what, he had a lot of bad things happen to him. That's not always the case that when we have bad things, it's because God's Trying to get our attention, but sometimes it is. You dwell, open up your ears. Is that what's happening? That ought to be the first thing you think. If I've done something that I need to repent of, if I've done something that I need to recognize and confess before the Lord, and then there's those attention getters for lost people. God gets your attention to show you your need of salvation. He stirs up your nest or he tears up your potato patch. He's trying to get your attention. You need to open up your ears. Perhaps he'll send one of these messengers to you. I think of Hebrews 3.8. It says, harden not your hearts is in the day of provocation. The Israelites hardened their hearts when God tried punishing them there in the wilderness. Don't harden your heart. Open it up to them. Lord, if you're trying to tell me something, uh, let me hear it. Amen. Do like little uh, Samuel did, and he said, yeah, here, here, I'm, here I am. Death is another messenger from God, by the way. Huh? All of us have been startled by the news of a neighbor or an acquaintance that's died. You may have said, Dad, I just saw him the other day. They were the picture of health, and now they're gone. Maybe they seem like they had good health or a, a strong body or a vigorous in mind and full of plans, but death uh, came by their way. Do you remember standing by that open grave or sitting in the funeral home? And with each glimpse at that coffin, the messenger of God says, I've got a message for you might be next. Every time you go to a funeral home, and the older you get, the more you hear that message. When you're a kid, you don't hear it very well. You think you're immortal. You think you're going to live to be 100 years old. But the older you get, when you go to those funerals, you realize that a lot of those peoples in those caskets are the same age as you are. Some of them are younger than you are. As you go to the funeral home and you see that casket and that one laying in the casket, there's a message from God for you that you may be next. It may be you in the coming weeks that's laying there in that casket and people are walking by and shaking their heads. Take that message from God and realize that you need a Savior. Trust Him because when you leave this world, your body will stay behind, but your soul will either be absent from the body and present with the Lord or will lift up its eyes in hell. Amen. 
There's a message from God for thee. Walk through the cemetery and you'll hear a message from God. Every grave will speak to you. Telling you of that common mortality that all human beings share. You may be next. I walk through cemeteries. I work at the funeral home. So a lot of times we're having to wait on the family to leave. And, and they stay, stay around for a long time sometimes. And you walk around looking at tombstones. You'll see some of these tombstones over here. They have a little lamb on top of them. That was a little child that died. You'll see uh, some here uh, where there was a young man, a teenager that, that had died. You'll, you'll see people of all different ages. And that time between that birth date and that death date uh, varies as you walk through the, that, 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 that cemetery. But that's a message from God. You may be next. You may not live to be old. You might say, I'll get saved when I get older. Well, the message from God is you need to be saved today. You may say, I'll serve God when I'm older. That message for you is you need to serve the Lord today. Remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. It's a message for us. It's a message for our loved ones. Our, our loved ones are mortal too. Often we think about our own mortality. What will happen to us when we die? But what will happen to your loved ones when they die? Do you know for a surety that they're born again? Do you know they're saved? Do you know uh, that they're secure? It's time you ask them. I mean, we encourage things now. They like, uh, uh, we encourage ladies to be checked for breast cancer. That's a great thing. Encourage them. Be safe. Be checked. Go for your colonoscopy when you're over 40. Encourage things that have to do with health. But how about the soul? Do you ever check on your loved one's soul? You might be worried about your mother getting her, her exam to make sure she doesn't have breast cancer, but you better worry about her soul too. Life's fragile. Jonathan Edwards was right. It's like a slender thread. In a moment it could break. Those gray hairs on your head are a message from God. Somebody told me that they said, man, you've got a lot more gray hair. I said, well, I've got teenage kids. Those gray hairs are a message from God. You're getting closer and closer to that date of death. Those wrinkles around your eyes, those crow feet. Those, when you look at those uh, kids and you, and you see that they're not children anymore, that they've grown up. When you go to that family reunion and the last time you seen uh, that young man, he was just a little boy, knee high to a grasshopper, but now he's as tall as an oak. That tells you, that's God saying, your time's getting close, you better get right. God uses loved ones sometimes to speak to us too. We get a message from God some, from somebody we love sometimes. I mean, mothers, some mothers have been praying for, for children for years and years and years that they'd get saved. God's speaking through that mother when she talks to you about salvation, how y'all to get right with the Lord, how y'all to serve the Lord. That's God talking through her. Those grandparents that's been around for quite some time, God speaks to those grandparents, to those grandchildren, uh, telling them uh, that there's things that are more important than just the carnal things of the world. Those friends that you blew off, Yet they were true friends because they wanted to see you saved. Thank God for those messages. The tract that you might find a laying around or that pastor. Those are messages from God. But you know what? There's a final message. Here in our text, Eglon got an abrupt message and it was a final message. He didn't get no more messages after that. Here comes Ehud. He, he says, I got a message from God for you. He takes out that dagger and he shoves it in the belly of Eglon. That's the last message that he ever got. And I tell you what, there's a last message for every human being. And when you die without the Lord Jesus Christ, that last message is it's too late. The rich man over in Luke got that message when he lifted up his eyes in hell. Being in torments. It was too late for him. He knew it too. He didn't say, how can I get out of here? No. He said, can you send somebody to talk to my brothers? 
It's too late when you leave this world without the Lord Jesus Christ. You better open your ears to the messages that he's been giving you. I don't know how many times there's been lost people sent through sermon after sermon under conviction who did not move and trust the Lord and they kept on putting off that so great salvation that one day they were gone from this world and the message was too late. Think of those friends of yours that's passed this earthly realm. Let their ghosts of departed loved ones come before you and say, I've got a message from God for thee. You'll follow and you'll be where I am one day. Here's another message from God, and I've been touched on a little bit. Who looked in the mirror this morning? I can look at some of y'all and say, you never got near a mirror. <laughs> no, you're looking at that mirror. You, as you look in that mirror, does that person look older to you? You look there and say, man, that wasn't there before. Huh? Your hair is back further than it used to be, like a bunch of rabbits walking backwards, receding hairline, more gray. That's God speaking to you. You better get ready. You better make sure you know him. You can't see inside of your arteries unless maybe you go to the doctor and do some kind of scan or something, but there can be some stuff going on there you have no idea about. But I tell you, you can see in outward signs you're getting older. Now is the accepted time. It's nature's way of telling you uh, that uh, it has a message from God for thee. The gospel itself is a message from God for you. There are many reasons why people come to church. Some people merely go because everybody else goes in their family. Or perhaps they go because they think it might help their business a little bit. Some go to make an appearance so other people will think that they're good people. Some go just to soothe their conscience. But you need to come here because God's got a message for you. And that message is the glorious gospel of Christ. Jesus will save you if you'll call upon him. If you'll just believe he is who he says he is. He is the Lamb of God come down from heaven. He bore your sins in his own body. If you'll just confess your sins to him, believe and he died on the cross for you and rose again from the dead, you can be saved. There's a message from God to you here in this building today. Don't go out disregarding it. Few come to church, though, with the idea that God's going to speak to them. God has something for you in this sermon this morning. If only you'll listen. Perhaps he's trying to wake you up. He's got a message for you. You've been deceived. Huh? Maybe God's got a message for you. You've trusted the wrong thing. Maybe God's trying to tell you that what you have been dependent upon is not real. And that you need something real in Christ Jesus. It's time you listen to when God speaks to you. You ever sit in church before and you felt unrest in your breast and you, tell it, you started uh, sweating and you started gripping the pews? That's the Holy Spirit with a message for you. It's time you moved. It's time you got down to business with God. God's got a message for you. Over and over again, it's a warning. Christ spent his whole ministry warning people. And he still does today. Don't leave this world without him. He said to one man, he said, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Let that message roll on over to you. His message is a message of grace. You can be saved. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come into repentance. Amen. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done in your past, no matter how far you've sunk down in the slime pits of sin in your past, he has got an arm that is powerful enough to raise you up and put you on the solid rock and save you. Amen. Why thirst when the fountain's before you? Why hunger when the bread is set before you, the true bread, the Lord Jesus Christ? Why go to hell when there's a Savior presented to you, waiting for you to come to him so he can save your wretched soul? What will you do with this message God's given to you today? Will you do like Felix? Felix, when the Apostle Paul preached to him, he was under conviction. God was speaking to him. God had a message for Felix. Paul preached to him about judgment to come, about righteousness, and about Christ. 
You know what Felix said? He said, go away for this time. I'll wait for a more convenient season and then I'll call for you. He put it off. He heard the message from God and he put it off. Don't do that. God's speaking to your heart. You need to come. Amen. Will you put it off? Will you ignore it? That'd be a foolish thing. God on high is talking. You're going to ignore him? Is he trying to correct you, Christian? Are you going to ignore him? I tell you what, when I ignored my father, I tell you what, things got worse. Right, it's time you listen to your heavenly father, Christian. It's time you opened up your ears. Will you ignore his message? Would you ignore a fire alarm? If you was in a building, a fire alarm went off, would you say, oh, it's just a false alarm? Or would you worry? I mean, I don't want to burn alive. I tell you what, I'd beat it toward the exit if the fire alarm went off. Well, I tell you what, your soul's more important than the body. Amen. And your body may be consumed with flames and may die mortally, uh, but if you neglect the Lord Jesus Christ and His message of grace, your body will do more. It'll be more than your body burning. It'll be your soul forever in the lake of fire. His message to you, Christian, is a message of service. Will you listen to that message and say as Isaiah, Here am I, Lord, send me? Or will you insult Christ by ignoring him? Will you take this message of grace that Christ has offered to you and saved you by, and will you take it to other people? Will you be a messenger of God? Will you be an angel? An angel means a messenger. Will you be a messenger for God? Or will you let the masses uh, go on their own way and march toward hell without warning them? It's time we thought about the messages from God this morning as we pray.